All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television show in the history of the universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I am going to be showing you my entire Catherine Kurtz book collection, comprising 12 books. Um, I know she's written more than that, but these are the books that I've collected of hers. So let's get into it, uh, and let's just talk about Catherine Kurtz to begin with. She was, now this, the first trilogy she wrote was the Dirini, um, the Chronicles of the Dirini, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, D-E-R-Y-N-I, Dirini, I say Dirini, you can say whatever you want, um, but these books came out in the early 1970s. So Catherine Kurtz was actually one of the pioneers of fantasy. I mean, in 1970, when these books came out, there was literally no fantasy books on the landscape except for Lord of the Rings, Conan the Barbarian, Fafard and the Grey Mouser, a few other things like... Uh, I think that was it. Maybe Lloyd Alexander's Prydain Chronicles. I'm sure some of you can think of others. But for the most part, it was slim pickings in a bookstore for this kind of stuff. And Catherine Kurtz. These were popular back then. I mean, they were the only, like, there was not much fantasy to read back in those days. So I'm going to talk about my collection of Catherine Kurtz novels. And, um... The, what they mean to me, what they meant to me as a youngster, and, uh, and what they mean to me now, and how I recommend, this is some writing advice, I re recommend anybody that ever decides to write epic fantasy to read Catherine Kurtz for this reason. You need to study how she, how she uses medieval prose and colloquialisms and different words and combinations of words and just how she constructs her story so it sounds like it's set in a medieval time nobody has done it since her nobody does it like her nobody does it better than her and nobody's done it since her you need to read these books just to get the cadence of what it's like to write a book set in a medieval time, and then study also how she builds her world, her magic system, um, how she can, how she um, talks about castles and everything that goes on in a castle and every duty and job that a person possibly could have in medieval, medieval times. And she effortlessly puts this stuff into her story using the verbiage that you would be using if you were to be speaking back in those days, kind of, I don't know how to explain it. You have to read it to get it. But if you read it, you will absorb this type of stuff. And then when you are writing your own fantasies, you will be like, oh, yes. There's very specific words and phrases that you can use in your own novel that will make it sound like it's an ancient text of writing. You can also do the same thing with Lord of the Rings a little bit. But let's talk about these novels specifically. So, like I said, these were some of the pioneer fantasy novels. Um, this was the first trilogy, Dorini Rising. I mean, it's it's set in a an alternate history sort of um, Europe. I don't even think it's an alternate history Europe. Uh, it is built upon European themes and um, social structural social structure feudalism, the religions. In fact, the religious texts that they use in these books are pretty much the Bible. In fact, she often quotes the Bible directly in these books, which is cool. It adds another flavor of ancient old timiness to it. Um, but the first book in the series was Dorini Rising. And, it, and even though when you read it, you'll be like, and by the way, we're going to talk about the covers too as we go over these. The covers are actually exquisite. Um, now, this is an early, early painting of Daryl K. Sweet. And, and you know Daryl K. Sweet did the um, Wheel of Time covers uh, in the 80s and 90s. But back in the early 70s, this was one of the very first Daryl K. Sweet paintings that graced a fantasy novel. And it's, it's, 
you can tell it's a little naive in execution compared to what some of the stuff he was doing in later years. But the thing I like about these books and all of them is they've got this similar theme um, on the covers with the, uh, the, the, the and they're all Daryl K. Sweet paintings. I, I really like that one. That's dope. But um, they're all Daryl K. Sweet paintings and they have these little scroll work things on the edges. The spines look good together. And then even on the back side, we have the little scroll work, little doodads and things and extra little artwork. So that's cool. One thing I will say about Catherine Kurtz is, uh, in my travels as an author myself, I have met Catherine Kurtz. In fact, I've met her a long time ago, back in the day when I used to do illustrations. for. Well, actually, this was before. Before I did any Magic the Gathering illustrations or illustrations for Dungeons and the Dragons, I met Katherine Kurtz at a um, science fiction convention in Utah, and she saw some of my artwork because I was trying to promote my art. I was just a college kid. She saw it and she thought it was dope. She was the one. She took. She was the one that sort of got me some work in the business. She took my portfolio and showed it to art directors like at TSR, Dungeons and Dragons, and Del Rey Books. She showed. She personally took some, my portfolio around and showed it to people, and I started getting work. Um, is a, as a college student, just because she noticed my talent in any way. She, I, I've always kept this letter that she wrote to me. She wrote me this nice letter. Um, and, uh, a few things we kept in correspondence for quite some time. Um, and as you know, I always show off my signed books. She only did sign three of my books, but, uh, there we go. Anyway. So that's the first trilogy. Now, all of these books, I've got four trilogies, 12 books total. All of these trilogies take place in the same Dirini universe. That's why I like them. It's a continuation of the story. Well, actually, six of the books go together, and the other six go together, but they all 12 tie together, if that makes sense. But this is the first trilogy that you should read. The second trilogy that she wrote was the Camber series. This is the um, the Legends of Camber of Goldie, Camber of Goldie. Again, some great Daryl K. Sweet cover art on each one of them. That one's cool. I like that. That looks like it. I don't know. It looks like the Pope is being christened the Pope. I don't know if it's christened as he's the Pope is being poped. Um, very religious centered books, the magic, uh, system and things like that is religious based, um, pagan witchcraft type of thing. Some portal fantasy, it's not portal fantasy. It's, they are, there are portals in, in this book that uh, transport people from one part of the land to the next. That's about as high tech as the fantasy magic elements really get, uh, in this but that is the second trilogy i like it I, I i'm not sure why they went with green for number three but you know whatever they had a nice theme going they fucked it up with the green but that's a minor quibble then the third trilogy she wrote was the um the histories of king kelson and this is probably my favorite trilogy of the group um and i think it's got the best daryl k sweet covers of, of them all that's a great cover I like the little scroll work up the top. This next cover is dope, too. Look at that guy, the archer, you know. And then the uh, third cover. So we've got the bastard heir. I think that's what that said. No, the bishop's heir. The bastard's heir. Does that, I don't, I guess that could be, I guess that could make sense. The bastard's heir. Um, the bishop's heir. Uh, the king's justice and the quest for St. Camber. Um... And then the last trilogy where the artwork and the graphic design on the books sort of starts to spiral out of control into Nonsenseville. Um, so this is the um, trilogy that's called the, the Heirs of St. Camber. Now, we've got a pretty good thing going. Well, it's just a clusterfuck. There's a great trilogy, but the covers make no sense. Um, in fact, I'm going to... In fact, when we get to the last cover, I'm going to tell you a little story. So, um, 
That's a decent cover, The Harrowing of Gwynedd. The Spine, okay. And then they, they use the same artist for King Javin's Year. It's a decent cover. You know, another crowning of another crowning of a young pope or a christening of a pope or something like that. And then, but then they fucked up the spine work on it. I mean, they didn't match that shit at all. And then um, we get to this book with the um, bastard prince. And we use uh, like this weird ass crazy Photoshop, this early, this late mid to 19, mid to late 1990s Photoshop bullshit. Oh my God. And, and I was, and, and one of, when I met Catherine Kurtz, this book had just come out and she to personally told me she thought this was the most cover she'd ever, ever seen. She didn't blame the artist. She had no, she didn't mind the artist. There's nothing to do with the artist, but she was just like, what the ever loving Sam Hill. <sighs> but anyway, that's what, you know, I, I remember that. And it is, it is, it's just, it doesn't make sense. Early or mid nineties Photoshop stuff just never made sense. You know, God bless the artist for giving it a go, but it doesn't make sense or, or even match the tone of the story at all. And then they even decided to fuck it up by making it purple. And then instead of a circle or nothing, a square. I mean, they're just all over the place with this bullshit now. Now they, 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 they did, they, they did trilogy one, trilogy two, trilogy three, pretty, pretty decent. I mean, all these spines match with the little flags and it all looks like it goes together. You know, these two, these two. And then on the, the very last trilogy, they were just like, eh, gives a fuck anymore we'll just do what well you know we'll just you know do this anyway that's my uh, Catherine Kurtz uh what was I doing oh yeah my Catherine Kurtz book collection that's it folks everybody should be reading Catherine Kurtz